We always knew that rock and roll was a great music about youth. And what we're finding is that it isn't just a great music about youth, it's a great music about the whole process of aging. It's about the whole process of one's chronology in life. If you associate your chosen form with the celebration of youthful exuberance, and you no longer feel youthful exuberance, either you fake it or you deal with the fact that you've lost it. It is organic to do that. He has this image, this, this quite eccentric, idiosyncratic image with the pencil moustache and the suits and the hats, and, and yet it's not an image. You don't get any sense of this being constructed or manufactured. You know, this is just, you know, the magnificence of Bob Dylan. He's evolved into this strange creature in many ways, but utterly wonderful creature who is Bob Dylan. The 1980s had not been kind to Bob Dylan. During the mid-70s, he had re-established himself as a vital voice in popular music, with the landmark albums Blood on the Tracks and Desire. But his conversion to Christianity at the close of the decade saw him ostracize his core fan base. His subsequent religious albums were attacked by the music press and suffered commercially, and throughout the 80s, Dylan struggled to recapture his audience. Disorientated by a music culture now obsessed with the superficial and with emerging technologies, by the middle of the decade he was trying in vain to modernize his sound while suffering from what appeared to be writer's block. Yet 1989 saw him return to form once more. Oh Mercy, recorded and produced by the unique Daniel Lanoir in New Orleans, was his first entirely self-composed release in four years and would appear on several Album of the Year and Album of the Decade lists. I think now it's become a classic record. Um, but I, I think that just the way it sounds and uh, the textures in it make it a, a lot different than anything he's done in the past. I look at that record as a sort of coming of age. It was like a, it was a hearkening of his new, I mean, I forget how old he was at the time, but he certainly was, a, was more than 50, you know? So it was like a new voice, it was another voice that he, that he had came up with. Here's my new voice, you know, it's a bit like that, you know, sort of nice way to present the next chapter of his career, you know. The 80s are a pretty horrible decade for Dylan. He's in his 40s, but by the end of the decade, things are starting to change. And I think there is this feeling that perhaps, you know, the 40s, the midlife crisis is something he has to get through. And, you know, he turns 50 and uh, then things can get really quite interesting in a way that they really haven't done in rock and roll before because as a medium it's not even old enough but so this notion of of uh, you know getting past the midlife crisis and then being able to as the great poets always did you know start really getting down to the nitty-gritty um, so it starts changing the never-ending tour is up and running and he's rediscovering uh, himself through that um, there's a return to songwriting after a horrible period of, of, of writer's block. You've got Travelling Wilburys, putting him back in the charts, and then this wonderful album, Oh Mercy, with Daniel Lenoir. And, um, you know, he goes into his 50th year and into the 1990s, actually in better shape than he has been all of the previous decade. <laughs> 